Hey everybody, today's video is going to be on body armor. We're going to talk about selection of hard armor versus soft armor, uh, the things you may want to look for when you're selecting a carrier and accessories, and how to set this up for a specific mission. All right, to jump off on this, uh, it's probably going to be easiest to start with, am I looking for soft armor panels or hard armor plate? I've got a bunch of different body armor up here on the table. Uh, some of it work issued, some of it uh, personal use stuff. The, uh, the one here starting that I'm looking at is going to be a soft armor level 3A set. So this is pretty thick. Um, higher rating on the, the ballistic protection for soft armor panels, and it has the uh, optional trauma plate inside there. So that would have been an under the clothing carrier. Uh, these days, it mostly sees work when I'm doing op four for Sims or something like that, but we'll demo this. Um, not gonna provide me any kind of rifle protection. This is all gonna be small arms, pistol, stuff like that. Uh, generally issued, for stopping the caliber of pistol that I was issued. As we're moving over, this is also soft armor, but this is gonna be in a external carrier. So this is work issued equipment, obviously, the uh, you know support stuff, radio, mags, taser, flashlight, cuffs, pens, notebooks, all that junk. So what this did for me was to get all of that stuff off my waistline, so all I have to, to get on my belt would be my pistol and tourniquets and stuff like that. What I want you to take away from this is that the ballistic protection afforded by both of these soft armor panels and carriers is the same. The way they are set up is to support the specific purpose of what I'm trying to do. So if it's have all of my equipment accessible pretty easily, that's accomplished by the external carrier on the right. If it's to be able to wear body armor in an area where I may want to be lower profile or underneath a shirt, whether I'm going to court or whether I'm acting in a plainclothes capacity or whether I just want to be teaching on the range and have added layer protection, uh, the soft panels on the left are going to be a little bit easier to do all that with. This was initially set up prior to going to an external carrier. So when I came on board with my last agency, they were issuing soft concealable armor, not an external carrier. That meant that I was able to up armor by throwing a plate carrier on over my uniform shirt. Obviously, that will no longer work with all of this. So the concealable armor here under a uniform shirt combined with this provided me with special threat rifle protection because those hard armor plates in there uh, were able to stop everything up to like 30-06 AP rounds. So because this was not going to be an all-day wear, you can see I have bolted most of the things that a person can bolt onto a plate carrier to this. So I've got comms management or storage. I've got battery storage. I've got four rifle mags. I've got a larger administrative medical pouch that I can work on others with. And I've got my personal use med pouch for me that everybody uh, would be able to see due to the, the change in color where they should be able to, to use that if I go down or need something. On the back, all the extra stuff that I might need, so multiple different types of flex cuffs, uh, longer drag handle, uh, some other administrative stuff and ID patches showing that I'm a, a cop and not just some guy running around in a plate carrier. That plate carrier is going to differ from the one I set up more for a home defense application. So since the rifle is a better fighting tool, and that's what I'm going to be grabbing when things go bump in the middle of the night, uh, this seemed like a good idea, and I still believe it is. So... Should I need to grab a gun and go do something in the house because I can't bunker down, um, I'm still bringing a gun into that encounter. So having some level of protection that protects me from rifle rounds and also pistol rounds, anything below the rifle round that I'm carrying, 
Uh, this is just meant to be slick. It carries a single rifle mag, some battery storage, still the same med kit. So I want to have access to my equipment that I'm going to be working at regardless of what uh, outfit I am. So that's why I standardized the loadout between those two. Um, and I could throw some pistol mags up in there. This is meant to go fast and not have a bunch of crap hanging off of it. So that is something I can get into very quickly and easily um, while I'm getting my home defense loadout. Right now I'm wearing my level 3A panels in that concealment vest. Uh, the carrier fits underneath a shirt, so I should be able to wear this in casual clothing. Now to the trained observer, they're going to know that you're wearing body armor. Either I'm a really thick guy, or you're going to start picking up on some of these edges with the, the trauma plate or just the contours of my body. So you can get away with this wearing it on daily use. As you go down in protection, the profile of the vest is probably going to small up. So level 2A providing the least protection, followed by 2 is going to provide more, and then 3A is going to provide the most for this soft body armor type uh, setup. Um, I am not going to have any level of rifle protection at this point. The soft panels are not rifle rated, so I will not gain that rifle protection until I add on some hard armor plates or trauma plates, usually in small areas over my most vital organs. So this is going to be mission specific. If you have the need to up armor against pistols or you're carrying a pistol, I'll quite often carry this on the range when teaching because it covers me on the ability to access my equipment, but also if something were to go wrong, this will stop the rounds that are on that range when I'm teaching a pistol class. I'm going to walk you through how I had to get into my external carrier every morning. Uh, the most vulnerable I would ever be was at the gym at 6 in the morning, having completed a morning workout, standing at the back of my patrol car trying to be within policy because no one could be in a county vehicle without their body armor on, right? So I would stand there before driving into the office from the gym, struggling into this, fighting with zippers. Um, this is appropriately sized. It should be snug. So while it is convenient, the process of getting into this thing in the morning can be a bit cumbersome. So Once it's there, with the snug fit, it's less prone to chafing. So as I move, the armor moves around me and moves with me. So if it's super loose, it's going to be wearing holes on me and, and chafing and, and causing discomfort. Um, the problem with it being snug is there's very little airflow in this thing. So um, when I could no longer tolerate the smell from inside the vest, that was usually when it got a washing. But August in Georgia on the side of a highway, you're going to know it's on. Um, the, the side protection is all around, so I'm actually getting a, a full side closure here, but you can see it doesn't close underneath the armpits, right? So I've got some vital areas here they are not protected, but hopefully I'm facing what I'm threatened by anyway. This has placed all of my equipment somewhere where I can get to it pretty quickly. I wore a drop leg down there to, to clear and to be able to ride in the car with my med kit and stuff like that. But I can get to most of my support equipment up here pretty quickly. Uh, downside. The bad guy can also get to all of my support equipment pretty quickly because if I'm wrestling around with him or grabbing him or going to an effect and arrest, it's right up here for him to get pretty substantial handles on, right? So now I've got this, this anchor point and someone that knows what they're doing with a good ground game can use that to their advantage and not yours. So uh, I still like this. It, it fits pretty well. It's easy to get in and out of reasonably. Um, and it saved my lower back because I don't know many guys or girls that worked in law enforcement for very long that don't have lower back issues. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this, but still not rifle rated. And now I've lost the ability to put an external plate carrier on. So if we were in need of rifle protection or doing a SWAT call or something like that, you'd have to take all this off, then put the, the heavy armor or the plate carrier on.
Should I have the need to up armor for some sort of rifle threat or if I need the access to support equipment for a specific call for service or mission, the hard uh, armor plates and plate carrier are going to fit that role. That'll be the first time I have any kind of ballistic protection from rifles. Um, I have to be able to get into this, so set up properly and adjusted so that it covers my vital organs and not hang them way down low. I can get into this pretty quickly, but we are going to start playing the ounces turning into pounds game pretty aggressively at this point. So not going to hang out in this thing all day if I can help it. Extra AR mags, med kits, flex cuffs, things of that nature. This vest wears really well, and the, the $1,100 per plate that I spent on these special uh, threat plates that are, you know, half an inch thick and, and weigh just a couple pounds, uh, they paid for themselves the first time I had to wear them. Uh, my first set of metal plates were, I believe, something like 11 pounds per plate, and I knew they were there for days afterwards. This balance as well. Uh, if you have things like replaceable placards, if I'm not running an AR, take this off, and now I've cut down on a good deal of weight. I've also gained back some mobility and the ability to go, get up and into position a little bit more aggressively. The more stuff I'm bolting onto this, the less mobile I'm gonna be, the longer it's gonna take to get into. Uh, so it is every single thing you put on these is gonna be a trade-off for something else. But now I've got rifle protection, whereas before with the soft armor, I didn't have any of that. To highlight my point about this, this is the configuration for some sort of elevated threat encounter I would have had at a law enforcement job. The soft panels worn under my uniform shirt initially, and then I would have thrown on the plate carrier above that to provide some level of ballistic protection for special threats or rifles. Uh, without that, the soft carrier is not going to stop any kind of rifle rounds. You lose the ability to do that again when you put on the load-bearing vest because now I have all this stuff hanging off the front of me. So what I gain in convenience with the load-bearing vest in terms of getting to my equipment, of not having that stress on my lower back, I lose in terms of being able to throw on some special threat or rifle protection and then have all of this additional support gear when you have that uh, special call for service or your active shooter or something like that. The last setup I'm gonna go over is gonna be my home defense or home response carrier. Uh, set up specifically to just deal with anything like a bump in the night or an armed actor in my house. So for those of us with dependents, little people or older people who cannot be responsible for defending themselves, bunkering down and waiting for the bad guy to come to you is not necessarily an option. So if I need to respond to something, the fastest way to get ballistic protection would be to throw this carrier on. It's slicked down with very little on it, so a rifle is generally my primary response firearm just because it's a better tool to work with you'll notice that the carrier as i throw it over plates towards the the bad guy what i'm supposed to be facing if i can secure it great but if i just leave it leaped over the neck probably going to get the ballistic protection i needed between me and the bullets work on pistol also work on the rifle um, once i throw it on i have access to medical gear because the bullets still go both ways uh, single AR mag for a reload if I need a flashlight battery or two for whatever reason I've got that but um, This is a very simple very fast method of getting pistol and rifle protection on now Where it does not protect me are the sides, but if I'm following that rule of facing my threat uh, This should provide much better protection than the soft armor especially if that guy has a rifle himself The purpose of this plate carrier or this armor set is going to be the first thing you have to determine. So if you are working in a plain clothes capacity or you just want some level of pistol protection where you can wear regular clothing over it, you're going to be in soft armor and a concealable carrier. If you want to load bear, you can get a load bearing vest. Uh, any kind of rifle protection, 
you're going to be into a hard plate. So when you're getting into hard plates, the weight and the protection are also going to be offset by price. So the more stuff it protects against, the more you're going to pay. The lighter the plate is, the more you're going to play. There is a sweet spot somewhere in there where you get level four protection and it comes with a very heavy plate, but you're not paying a lot of money. So for your home defense application, that may be a really good place to start. Um, we'll get into the differences between ceramic plates and steel plates in a different video and we go into this further. But the starting point for all of this is what is my mission? What equipment do I have to have available? And how concealable does this need to be? So if you will start with that process, later videos are going to talk about how to start accessorizing this and how to make your purchases uh, using smart decision making. All right, everybody, this is our video for today. If you uh, enjoyed the information and thought it was useful to you, please like the video and consider sharing it with somebody that might benefit from this information. Uh, written copies of these are usually put up on our blog within a few days on sparrowdefense.com. Social media, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We are Sparrow Defense there. And uh, until next time, please be safe.